Good morning from COVID Central here. Well, maybe where you are is COVID Central too, but we've been social isolating here and I've got to say, um, Barb has been incredible about helping me be healthy because um, of my Guillain-Barre, it seems as though I might be at slightly greater risk of um, viruses. So because of that, she's been quite diligent in helping me to be diligent. And um, she really has been great about that. And not in an overbearing way, but in a protective way and in, a, um, in an intentional way, which I certainly appreciate. Uh, I wanted to uh, greet you guys and say hello. And uh, even though there's no you know, face-to-face -face Sunday school because we're all being um, safe. I did want to share the um, scripture for the fourth Sunday in Lent and continue about our Lenten journey. <coughs> <coughs> Don't worry, that was allergies, not uh, coronavirus. But I wanted to share with you um, the next scripture reading in the um, progression that we've been seeing in the Lenten journey uh, for that. So here it is. It is from John. It, this is chapter 9. Last week uh, was chapter 4. And it's quite a long reading, but it, it, it tells the whole story. And I'm going to, um, well, we'll go from there. But here's the reading for today. As he walked along, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, Neither this man nor his parents sinned. He was born blind so that God's work might be revealed in him. We must work the works of him who sent me, while it is day, night is coming, when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Because Jesus being the light of the world, remember, he's talking about the man, what, receiving no light. And now he's going to have God's power revealed in him. So, uh, pretty cool from that standpoint that now he's equating the fact that uh, because even if you'd never read the story, you have an idea about what's going to happen here. Um, Jesus is going to heal the guy and provide light into his life. So here it comes. Verse 6. When he had said this, he spat on the ground, and he made mud from the saliva, and spread the mud on the guy's eyes, saying to him, Go wash in the pool of Siloam, which means scent. Then he went, to, the guy went and washed his eyes, and he came back able to see. Now, obviously, he had helper here. Uh, he wasn't alone, because... You know, they weren't right next to the pool of Siloam, a little way away. So he said, go wash, but that indicated that he was going to have to go be, you know, taken there. So it's not just the Jesus, the disciples, and the, the, the blind guy, or at this point, the formerly blind guy. Now it's um, whoever his helpers are, and presumably as was often the case with Jesus, a crowd of onlookers. The neighbors and those who had seen him before as a beggar began to ask him, is this not the man who used to sit and beg? Some were saying, it is he. Others were saying, no, but uh, someone like him. And he kept saying, I am the man. But they kept asking him, then how were your eyes open? How, how did you, how'd you get healed? 
He answered, The man called Jesus made mud. He spread it on my eyes and said to me, Go to Siloam and washed. And I went and washed and I came back. And I went and washed and received my sight. So mud went, washed, then he received his sight. The mud didn't do it all on its own. It was a several step process. And then they said to him, Where is he? He said, I don't know. Then they brought to the Pharisees the man who had been born blind because they want to get to the bottom of it. So the neighbors are all interested now in what's happening and the fact that uh, here's this dude born blind. They want, to, they want to see what's happening and they don't know. So here it is. The Pharisees also began to ask him how he had received his sight. And he said to them, well, he put mud on my eyes and then I washed and now I see. Some of the Pharisees said, this man is not from God for he does not observe the Sabbath. But others said, how can a man who is a sinner perform such signs? And the Pharisees were divided. So they asked again the man born blind, what do you say about him? It was your eyes he opened. And the man said, he was a prophet. The Jews did not believe that he had been blind and had received his sight until they called his parents of the man who had received his sight. And they said, is this your son? Now, you notice what's going on here. They keep needing um, increasing levels of verification of who the man is. But what did they do? They say, we don't know who this is. Are you the one born blind? Yes. Well, you look like the one more that was born blind, but we're still not sure. So we're going to ask your parents. Who are your parents? Now, they're relying on the guy. And they knew the guy. Something's going on that they need increasingly stringent levels of verification here because they're not believing their own eyes. And you see what's going on as a subtext then. Here's the man that was blind. Everybody knew him. Everybody threw alms to him. Well, not everybody did, but everybody, you know, did or didn't, but they knew who he was. It wasn't such a big town that they needed, um, you know, a, an ID badge for him. So now who's blind? The one who was blind were the ones who refuse to see. Because, uh, you know, the fact is, they had the verification they needed before. And now, they're continuing to, to have it shoved in their face. And yet, what's going on? They don't want to believe. Their blindness is self-imposed. And they, uh, they asked the parents, is this your son who was born blind? How then does he now see? His, parent, his parents answered, we know this is our son. And yes, he was born blind, but we don't know how it is that now he sees, nor do we know who opened his eyes. Ask him, he's old enough. He can speak for himself. So the parents are, you know, happy that their son, well, it doesn't say they're happy, but presumably they're happy and they'll have a big uh, confab later. Right now, they're not so keen to get in trouble on his behalf. Yep. He's been begging for himself for a while now. So for the second time, they called the man who had been born blind and they said, give glory to God. We know that this man is a sinner and now you can see um, the subtext of what's going on. Uh, we know that Jesus is a sinner and we want to get to the bottom of this. And it's not about finding the truth and it's not about really even giving glory to God. It's about getting Jesus in trouble, which we've seen that progression now as we've gone through um, our Lenten journey that he's becoming increasingly enmeshed with those that uh, are set against him. 
but he's not backing down from them. It's not a matter of, uh, oh, they're against me, what, what should I do? It's a matter of him continuing to work the works that God sent him to do in spreading the kingdom of God. His mission is to help people understand that he is ushering in God's kingdom. That's the mission. And nothing is dissuading him from it. He's not stopping his mission because people are questioning him, because he's, he's um, uh, stepping on the status quo, so to speak. That's not an impediment to his work for the kingdom. His work for the kingdom comes first, even though now he's running afoul of, of the authorities, of the people who have a vested interest in the way things are. And the way things are is uh, not 100% in line with the way God wants his kingdom to run. There's still people on the outs. There's still people who think that, uh, that God's love is only for a specific slice of people and not for the world. There's still people that believe that, uh, you know, because <clears throat> someone is, is poor, or in this case of the dude born blind, that, that uh, because of his sin, he gets set out of God's kingdom. And of course, Jesus is saying that's, that's not how it works. That's not, that's not how we're going to be running the kingdom. That's not what God has in mind for God's people. Now, you might rightfully ask, but didn't he, you know, channel it all through the Jews? And he did. But notice how, in the last story, when he was talking with the uh, Samaritan woman, he said he didn't say salvation was for the Jews. He said it was through the Jews. They were always supposed to be a light to the Gentiles. And here, he's, he's being a light to um, his, his own people. But his own people that were set aside as sinners, specifically in the sinner category. So not only last week did we see Jesus specifically going to the Samaritans who were on the outs, specifically going to open the door to people who had been, you know, set outside of the kingdom of God's grace. Now we see it again. Jesus knew what people thought of that man born blind. I'm pointing there like he's down there. Jesus knew what people thought of that, that, that he was a sinner, that he was um, getting what he deserved because somehow or another, either his parents or his grandparents or, or he himself in the womb had sinned and that he was in a state of sin and that the, the blindness was proof of it. And now here Jesus specifically says, no, it's not about that. Here's what's going to happen. God's grace is for this man. And he's going to, to be well now. Because he was always welcome in God's kingdom. The blindness was a physical trait that didn't keep him from being God's person. Well, by that same token, uh, the, being a Samaritan didn't keep you from God's kingdom either. And today we see that not only does he go further into the teeth of those who um, disagree with him, but he makes it clear that the circle of who fits into God's kingdom is getting wider and wider. that he's not keeping people out. He's finding ways to help people understand they get to be in. Let's finish reading here. The Pharisees reviled him. 
uh, reviled the man that was born blind. You are his disciples, but we are disciples of Moses. We know that God has spoken to Moses, but as for this man, we don't know where he comes from. The man answered him, Well, here's an astonishing thing. You do not know where the man came from, came from yet Jesus opened my eyes. We know that God does not listen to sinners, but he does listen to one who worships him and obeys his will. Never since the world began has it been heard that anyone opened the eyes of a person born blind. If this man were not from God, he could do nothing. Now this is the formerly blind dude talking. They answered him, you were born entirely in sin and you're t trying to teach us? And they drove him out. They kicked the, the formerly blind dude out. Jesus heard that they had driven him out and he found him. Jesus went and found the man that he had healed. Walked around the town till he found out where he was. Do you believe in the Son of Man? He answered, and who is he? Tell me so I can believe in him. And Jesus said, you have seen him, and the one speaking with you is he. And the man that had been blind said, I believe, and he worshiped him. And Jesus said, I came into this world for judgment so that those who do not see may see, and that those who do see may become blind. People who think they know it all are seen as the blind people they have always been. Some of the Pharisees near him heard this, and surely we're not blind, are we? And Jesus said, if you were blind, you would not have sin. But now that you say we see, your sin remains. The fact is that Jesus was all about helping people to see. But the man born blind had the advantage, so to speak, of knowing he was blind. He wasn't like the people that were kept asking increasing circles of people who it was. There's sassy barking. That uh, dog passing by. He didn't, uh, he, he wasn't like the, the Pharisees or the people who didn't want to get in trouble with the Pharisees who kept asking even though they know the, knew the answer. They were intentionally blind. They were blind on purpose. And there's no blindness like that. So when Jesus was telling him, I've come to open the eyes of the blind, but you know, make the blind, the, the sight, sight of people blind, he wasn't saying he was gonna poke out their eyes so much as that he was gonna point out the fact that our own blindness can keep us out of the kingdom just like it was doing for the Pharisees. They could easily have recognized God's power in Jesus' life. They didn't do it. They didn't do it. So our job is to recognize God's power when we see it and to faithfully transmit it, to be part of the light and help other people see it as well. That means we have to recognize our own darkness and part of their, our Lenten journey is, is asking forgiveness for that. But then it's also a matter of, once we've asked for forgiveness, helping others to see that. Now, personally, of course, that's um, more and more difficult, but the reality is that we still have connection. I got a wonderful call from Zelda the other day on my birthday and she was just checking up on people. And I liked being checked up on. I liked the connection. And we can all continue to do that. We can all continue to be part of God's grace and helping people to understand that everybody, everybody can be part of God's kingdom. Thank you all. And I hope you all continue to stay safe and I, I appreciate each and every one of you. Thank you.